Hello and welcome to Fluke Fridays. This is episode number 26 and thanks for joining. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the Fluke 830 alignment tool. Um, it is the laser shaft alignment tool from Fluke. We're going to talk a little bit about the history behind how Fluke got into alignment tools as well as what do you get with this tool, kind of an unboxing, and not only what you get with it, but how do you use it, or how would you go through the setup menu, and what are the features and benefits of this. So hopefully this is beneficial. If you are interested in this, or you think that alignment, laser shaft alignment is something for you, leave me a comment below, or let other people know what, what you think of it if you already own this tool. So here we go, let's jump into it. So as we look at this, you see, it's going to come with this case. Um, inside the case, you get everything you're going to need for alignments. As we open it up, we're going to see a few things we get. Um, this does not come with it, I think, but this is an example report that you can print after you have made an alignment. And I think there's samples on the Fluke website if you want to see that. So you're going to get your charger, your charger to charge the thing. Um, you're going to get, I always say, get, get a free tape measure when you buy a $10,000 tool from Fluke. So isn't that nice of them? Free cheap tape measure, or you can use your own tape measure if you prefer. So whatever. Um, you're going to get USB stick cables. Um, and some other things. Let's open this up and see what it looks like. So here now we get into what the tool is actually going to look like. You've got your main base, you've got your sensor head, and then you've got the prism, the refractive prism on the other side. So that's what comes with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a test rig out now and set it up and we can actually go through uh, how you would do your setup and your alignment with the 830. Okay, so now we have our demo rig set up here, and what you see is you see an S and an M, and what that stands for is stationary and movable, or you can think of it as a motor and whatever you can't move. So the motor typically you can move, and then if it's connected to a pump, obviously you can't move a pump very far, or it could be a blower, a fan, it could be a gearbox, whatever, that's gonna be whatever this is. This is typically gonna be a motor. In this example, our motor is going to be on the right hand side. You could have a motor on the left hand side. So the first thing you want to do when you get in front of a motor and you're going to align it, you're going to turn on the Fluke 830 alignment tool. If you have a newer version, it's going to be a, called a Fluke 830 BT for Bluetooth, and I'll show you the difference of that here in a second. Here's the boot up screen, and what you're going to find here is going to do a little splash screen, and once we get past the splash screen, it's gonna show us what a motor setup might look like. So here we go, we have it on the screen. I'll bring this in a little closer. So a little bit about the screen. You can see the units that we're gonna be measuring in are always up here. Sometimes they're down here, but they're always gonna be up in the top right-hand corner. Then if we look at this, we see that the side with the feet on it, that's going to be our movable side. The side without feet is going to be our stationary side. You also see where the laser is and where the prism is. So you see the lasers on the left and the prisms on the right in this situation. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the screen matches reality and reality matches the screen. So first we need to set up our laser or our prism and we our laser on the left hand side. So got this out. And I recommend you you take this. Ah, let me show that to you. I recommend when you go around if you have a, a, a smaller shaft that you're aligning, you take this instead of going around the outside and looping like this which is fine, you can for, especially for larger shafts, that it works best to do it like that. You can also, see from underneath, you can take this and poke this metal thing up through here to get on smaller shafts. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Okay. 
Once it's on there, you tighten this nut to snug it down. Okay, now we still need the prism on the other side, so we're gonna match that. Okay, now we don't have any laser shining up here. Let me adjust this camera real quick. Okay, you can see there's no laser, so I need to turn this on. If you have an older unit like this, there's a little switch on this side, and I'm gonna turn it so you can see it. There's that little on-off switch, so you're gonna turn that on. If you have the newer Bluetooth model, it'll be a button on the side or something, and you won't have this little battery pack on the bottom. Now you can see this blinking red light over here, so our laser is initiated. It is not in the crosshairs, so we would want to. So we want to try to get it in the crosshairs. You don't want to adjust that. Um, you don't want to turn the shaft by moving this, but I'm just going to get this aligned on the crosshairs. So now that I got that, I can get back to the screen. Okay, so now we're back at the screen. We got our laser on. I will take this cap off. Forgot to do that. And it's going to ask us for some measurements. So as you're going through the 830, if you read in this yellow bar, that is going to be your instructions for the next step. So it says measure the distance from the sensor head to the prism. That's what we're going to do first. And what units are they asking for? It's asking for inches. If you prefer millimeters, you can do that in the settings under menu and configuration. And then under configuration, there's regional settings, regional settings. And here's where you can change from inch thous. If you don't like those, you can do millimeters or you can do inches and mils. A lot of uh, the folks in the US like inch thous, so we'll leave it in that for now. But I will say this, millimeters are easier because you don't have to do fractions. Okay, so measure the distance, let's do it. And we want to go from center of post to center of post. You can see the little line there. So it's about three and three eighths. Okay. Now you can type that in in decibels or you can actually do fractions with this and I'll show you that. So three and then hit that twice plus three divided by eight. That's how you do your fractions, hit enter. Now it's gonna ask distance from the prism to the middle of the coupling. Again, you're gonna take this and you're gonna eyeball it. I got you kind of off at an angle so you can't see it exactly. But yeah, it's just over, well, it's right about an inch and a half. So I'm gonna do one and a half inches. I can do this decimal conversion in my head. There you go. Now it's gonna ask the, the diameter of the coupling. Again, you can just hold up your tape measure against it, kind of get an eye for it. So it looks like it's about one and a half inches. And that's saying one and a half, that's close enough. It's asking for RPM now. Do you, um, the, the value of, what, what this thing's gonna rotate at? What's the RPM it's gonna operate at? And for this, what you wanna do is you want to tell, tell what it's operating at, but just know the higher the RPMs, the tighter the tolerances it's going to take to get into the green um, light when we get to the next step. So this is a very small rig. It's going to be very hard to make adjustments. So we're going to say at uh, 600 RPM. And the next one, we're going to do distance from the center of the coupling to the first foot. That's about two inches, so two, enter, and the distance between foot to foot, and that's three and a half inches. So 3.5, enter. Okay, now it goes to the next screen. It's gonna initiate communication between the sensor head because these are wireless, so we don't have any wires connected from here to the unit. Um, it's gonna say I need to be in calibration, but we don't need to because we're not actually doing a 
live. So here we go. Now you can see this as I rotate it on the screen, it'll rotate too. So what we need to do is we need to take three readings and they need to be in the green slices of pie. You see there's kind of like this beige slice of pie. Can't take a reading there, so we need to be three green slices of pie. And you want to do it in one direction of rotation. You don't want to go back and forth. So here we go. We're going to do the first slice. We hit enter. Green slice of pie will turn like an orange. Then you rotate to the next green slice of pie. So with this tool, you'll need a minimum um, rotation of about 90 degrees or just under to do your readings. Once you get three readings, it's going to do some calculations and it's going to tell us how much or how we should be moving this thing. So you can see the red LED light aligns with the worst case bar on here. So red um, here, so we're off horizontal the most and then vertical a little you can see how much your gap and offset actually is. And then over here, you see all these numbers. Where do we know how, what those numbers units are? Remember, top right hand corner, thousands right here. So 6.2 thousands, if we were from the, t the, um, the side view, then we would wanna put the shims in of 6.2 up here or one, and 1 1.4 in the back. And then from the top view, we actually wanna move the motor away from us, 15.3 mils and 5.5 mils. Now you can do the vertical first or the um, horizontal. It's really up to you. If you have jack bolts like we have today, we're gonna do the horizontal first and I'm probably gonna leave the vertical alone because you don't wanna see me do that. It'll take us forever. So now we're gonna hit menu and we're gonna go into a feature that I really like called the move feature. Um, we'll talk about soft foot later as well. You could do soft foot at this point or before if you wanted to. Here's move. Now, it's gonna ask us to rotate the sensor to a 45 degree angle, so we're gonna rotate the shaft. I don't know if you can see this in the background, there we go. Okay, we get that there. And you can hit enter or you can just wait on it and it should pop up. Now it's gonna say, do you wanna move in the horizontal or the vertical? We wanna move horizontal, so I hit enter. Now it's showing us from the top view how we need to move it. Let me grab a screwdriver and let's take that next step. Okay, let's see if I can put this somewhere where you guys can see it. Okay, you guys can see it there. So I'm gonna mess with this a little bit, move the jack bolts out on the other side and then start tightening them on this side. And you wanna go slow. If you go too fast, you'll overshoot it a lot of times. Um, so less is more with this. So you move it and then you rest. And then you move it again and then you rest. Sorry, I didn't loosen up these, uh, these guys. So we need to do that. Okay, it seems like it's getting worse, but we will, we will get there. Okay. I need to loosen up these on the other side. I'm pressing against the other ones. So if it starts doing funky things like that, you probably have the other ones. You're locked against the other um, jack bolts on the other side or puller bolts sometimes people will call them. Okay. Ooh, jumped a lot on me. See, I overshot it. You saw that that went green and now it's yellow and this bar up here changed. So now you see our gap and offset is much closer. I wanna bring it back this way just a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can, see if I can do that. Ooh, that, I'm liking that a lot better. So now we're in the green on the horizontal movement. Once you're in the green on the horizontal movement in the live move mode, we wanna go back to measurement. You see these three buttons down here? These are shortcut buttons, so we can go back to setup if we want to start from the beginning, which we don't, but I can still click that. Um, or we can hit measure. That's what we want to do. We don't want to hit measure all this, or we don't want to enter all the measurements again, or all the, uh, yeah, the distant measurements. So now we're going to measure on here. So again, 
Let's go back to where we were. Green. We hit enter. Rotate. Oh, I actually already took one on accident. My bad. And again. And we'll see if we got any better. And you can see the vertical actually jumped all the way up. And our horizontal is better. It was in the red, and now it's um, in the orange. So we can do this again. I forgot to tighten these down. That might be making the difference. Let's do it once more. And you can see how you jump back to it. Measure. Whoops, not what I meant to do. Sorry, let's get out of here. Let's go back to live move. Forty five degrees, enter. Horizontal. Now we're good. Okay, I played with it a little more off camera for you guys. We're gonna do this measurement again. Hopefully we've got it pretty good and locked in. So one reading, two readings, and three readings. Now you see we are in the green, but even if you're not in the green, you should have some um, tolerances that you should care about. Again, units are over here, thous, and you have your gap and offset for both of them. So we're really aligned right now. Now, other features that you might care about in this tool, we hit menu, you can go to soft foot, and you can follow the instructions here. Basically, you put this at a horizontal position and what you're going to do is you're going to unscrew or loosen the um, the bolts on the feet and then tighten them down one after another and take multiple readings as you go around. It'll tell you whether you have soft foot or not. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this Fluke Friday. This is kind of everything um, to get started with a Fluke 830 or a Fluke 830BT if you have a newer version. The BT stands for Bluetooth. And Hopefully you guys found this beneficial, kind of a walkthrough on how it works. Uh, this is was Fluke's first step into alignment and it was a laser shaft alignment tool. There's actually a brand new belt alignment tool and I will be doing a review on that in the next couple weeks of just kind of an unboxing and where somebody might use this. This specific tool, the 830, is gonna be used for any time you wanna align a motor and something else like shaft to shaft alignment with a coupling in between or close coupled. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Happy to get to them. Take care.